It's the Roughnecks and the Panthers. Michigan favored by two and a half in their third straight home game. This is the lowest total we've seen all season at 38 and a half. Forecast yet again ideal for Jake Bates to see his third straight game hitting one from 60 plus. I think the only chance for any semblance of offense in this game comes from Reed Sinet, who really looked the part in last week's loss to D.C. When Jared Garantano was named the starter, I thought that said a lot about him, that this coaching staff was willing to place the faith in him. Even a guy like Eric Price, who has been OC everywhere, even back to Alabama before the Saban era. So I had some confidence in Garantano getting back to his uh, SEC caliber ways when he was at Tennessee. But, you know, Sinet does have more NFL experience, and it makes you wonder if if Houston would be sitting in this same position had Reed Sinet been the day one starter. But now he's going to get his chance. Garantano goes to the IR. Uh, I'm sure Roughneck fans were – Happy with what they saw on on Sunday. It was definitely some progress. In fact, only Garbers, McCarron, and Perez threw for more yards than than Sinet did. He didn't even come in until like the third or fourth drive of this ball game. So it became evident that DC's game plan was solely focused on Garantano and his ability to run the ball. And when Sinet came in, that threw him off balance. So it looks like Houston will be forced to throw some more because Mark Thompson doesn't seem to be coming back anytime soon. Hasn't practiced yet. Um, USFL Offensive Player of the Year last season was marketed in the trailer as one of the stars. Just unfortunate he has not been able to play for this fan base. And, and because of that, just 46 yards per game on the ground for the Roughnecks. Uh, they also have some injuries at receiver. Kirk Merritt, who was tracked down on what would have been a touchdown. I mean, really tough for him. You go from green grass in front of you, about to go up by two scores and be the hero to knock off DC to land on your wrist and go right to the injury report. Uh, Justin Hall, another receiver, was also pretty shaken up near the end of the game, so keep an eye on that. But ultimately, the Panthers' defense has continued to impress me. They've, they've continued to limit uh, the two best teams in the league. Again, really tough schedule for Colin Bauer as DC here to kind of navigate these two offenses. And and they've held teams to just 30% in the red zone so far. Frank Ginda leading the UFL in tackles. So despite Sinet providing the spark, I think I give a big edge to the Panther defense here. Let's focus on the Michigan offense now against that roughneck defense, flipping sides of the ball. Another big defensive edge for me, uh, Michigan continuing to rely on explosive plays, which are great when they happen, but absolutely not sustainable. And it seems like when you're watching this offense, it's either a 50-plus yard touchdown or like a two-yard loss or a sack or something negative. Um, For the Panthers at this point, dead last in the league in passing offense, which is wild considering those uh, explosive plays. They have four completions of 40 yards or more. That's tops in the league by far. E.J. Perry only completing 56% of his passes. That's last in the league. Also leads the league in interceptions with three. And to make matters worse for Panthers fans, I guess depending on how you see it, uh, he's actually nursing an ankle. So he hasn't practiced this week. He may not play. Uh, Wes Hills, the running back, nowhere to be found against Birmingham last week. Seven carries for 10 yards. They lose wide receiver Devin Ross to the IR and that really starts to hurt because he was he was looking like a wide receiver one. Marcus Sims kind of stepped up with a big 78 yard touchdown catch last week, but now he's a little banged up as well. Um he's been out of practice, so that Michigan offensive line who gave up seven sacks against the Birmingham Stallions is going to have their hands full with Reuben Foster, who has been a force to be reckoned with. Might be the best defensive player in the league. Uh, Roughnecks defense, I'll highlight them. They lead the league in TFLs. They're limiting opponents to 2.5 yards per carry. So if you haven't figured it out yet from what I'm saying, take the under. I mean, you got the worst two offenses in the UFL here, and Jake Bates can't kick 13 field goals to cover 38 and a half himself. 
I shouldn't say Jake Bates can't do anything. He probably could. And just because I said that, he's probably going to have 13 field goals. But that's not going to cash the over on its own. I do expect this one to be close. So special teams and defense will matter. I really went back and forth on this one, but ultimately trust Michigan's defense a little bit more. Remember, they have faced the only two starting quarterbacks in the UFL that were also NFL draft picks with Matt Corral and A.J. McCarron. And they really limited those two guys. So Panthers are the pick for me. And I think this is the under spot of the year. I have not seen a more attractive under this entire season so far. Zook, <laughs> let me guess. Going the other way. Yeah, of course. Houston. We wow. got to take him. Listen. That confident in Sinet, huh? I like him. Well, you know I like him. Right? Former Eagle. That's right. See. You know. So just tell us your pick is biased and move on. It's not really biased. <laughs> No, he did look um, good. He did look with good. with a full full uh, full week of first team reps. Yeah. He looked pretty damn good last week, right? 